we have to get this information out into the public so that they understand we're not dealing with a small leak here, we're dealing with a, an extremely serious situation. We know hypothyroidism is something that's sensitive to radiation, to, to iodine. We've seen it before and we've documented it in our paper. Uh, experiments on rats years ago, um, people in the South Pacific exposed to atomic bomb fallouts, um, people uh, living downwind from Three Mile Island and people uh, from and after the Chernobyl accident all showed in increased uh, levels, uh, rates of hypothyroidism. And we also know that the fetus and the newborn are far, far more sensitive than adults to a particular dose of radiation. So I had to call up all 50 states, uh, newborn screening programs. I yearn for the day when this country has three states instead of 50. Um, 41 states responded. Um, we, we found that the five states on the west coast in the Pacific, California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii, tended to have the highest levels of not just gross beta that we found, but other uh, researchers have found high levels in kelp and in soil and, and, and air as well. So we compared the changes, the 20 to 10, 2011 changes uh, in the cases of newborn hypothyroidism for these five states versus the rest of the country, the other 36 states for which we had data. Um, we found the following. We found that in the first 15 weeks after the fallout from Japan arrived in the United States, the number of newborn thyroid hypothyroid cases increased 28% on the West Coast, and for the rest of the year, the last nine months, increased 16.5%. Uh, this is compared to the rest of the country in which we saw a 3% decline. Uh, the differences are statistically significant, although we do point out in the article that these aren't a huge number of cases. I am proud to be here and express my vision, my understanding of the Chernobyl situation. 24 years ago, it was Mikhail Gorbachev who asked me to chair the, comi the Committee of Ecology of Soviet Parliament. I was Soviet parliamentarian. It was, I immediately uh, understand, locate, that Chernobyl is the number one environmental catastrophe in the Soviet Union. And later, Gorbachev accept that from Chernobyl, Chernobyl, it was start to collapse of Soviet Union. I was in 2011年、福島原発事故当時、日本の総理を務めていました菅直人でございます。最悪のシナリオというものを私自身、さらには専門家にも検討してもらいました。先ほど申し上げたように福島第一第二原発を合わせると10の原発と11の使用済み燃料プールがありますこれらが全てコントロール不能になってそれらがメルトダウンしそして放射性物質を大気中や海水中に放出した時にどれだけの量の放射性物質が外に出ていくのかチェルノブイリの事故がこれまでの事故ではもっとも大きかったわけですがチェルノブイリ事故は一気の原発事故でありましたそれに比べて実機の原発がさらには使用済み燃料プールがコントロール不能にな
この2 5 0キロ圏の中には東京を含む首都圏も含まれておりましてその中に住んでいる我が国の国民は約 5,000 万人人口の半分近くに達しますもしこの地域から 5,000 万人の人々が家を捨てあるいは職場を離れ学校を離れあるいは入院している人たちは病院を離れて避難しなければならないそういう状態になっていればその避難の過程でも多くの犠牲者が出たでありましょうしその後の日本は国としての機能を長期間にわたって十分果たせないまさにそういう極めて重大な最悪のシナリオが紙一重の状態にあったわけであります。It is important to note that as physicians and scientists and PSR and those who work with us,、uh, that we have no special vested interest、uh, for or against nuclear power. But we take our oath to protect the public's health seriously and we speak primarily with the medical voice. I think it's important to also understand that nuclear scientists and those who spend their entire lives working with radiation or whose livelihoods are dependent or associated with this technology. Are naturally going to have a different perspective and a different risk assessment from us. We should recognize this difference but strive to find an objective approximation of the truth. What is clear, however, is that as a species, we have tended to choose expediency and short term benefit over the longer term responsibility to our ecosystem and to future generations. It used to be That it appeared that we had the luxury of doing what we wanted to satisfy our own needs for growth or development, or simply to satisfy our desires. We could take what we wanted and throw away anything we wanted to. And we just assumed that we, that we would always have enough fuel, or commodities, or the great big ocean, or the wide atmosphere would just swallow up our waste and our hubris. Now, in this Anthropocene age, We know that this is no longer true, and it never was true. We have failed to see the implications of our actions, and they have threatened not only our existence, but the very existence of life on this planet. So it is in this light that we must look at our choices for energy production. We must weigh carefully the risks and benefits, and we must seek to include all of the externalities. For nuclear power, this includes the medical and public health consequences of the entire fuel cycle, from the mining and enriching of the nuclear fuel, its transport, operations in the nuclear reactors, their inevitable accidents and releases, and then the reprocessing, waste disposal, and the proliferation of fissile materials and production of nuclear weapons. It is no longer acceptable to continue with the status quo. We must shake loose the shackles of the old ways that have bound us to a course that will lead to our inevitable destruction and do as Einstein demanded adopt a new way of thinking if we are to survive. That I was so annoyed and frustrated with the arrogance and ignorance of the media about radiation biology after Fukushima, especially with one George Monbiot at The Guardian. Who knew nothing about internal emitters or anything, and they, and they kept saying people haven't dropped dead, and they're still saying that. That I thought it was appropriate to sort of set up a medical conference for two days, like medical school, to teach them the basic elements of radiation biology. And that's why I put this symposium together to educate the media. Unfortunately, There were representatives here, but we could have had a lot more, so they're not really quite turned on to it yet. And I suppose I have to say that、uh, the American media really worries about Americans, like a little girl trapped down a well or that sort of thing.、Um, and it was interesting to note that when the sailors came along, that very, was very pertinent because they're Americans. And I don't think people can extrapolate too much in this country to Japanese. Number one. And number two, when Chernobyl happened, I can remember being on a telephone in a Texas airport talking to an ABC radio commentator 
um, who said, well, they're just Russians. <laughs> and I was absolutely flabbergasted. I said, I'm a physician and every human life is precious. So that attitude of insularity uh, prevails and it's prevailed today. So the only way to turn this country upside down, as Jefferson said, an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. Now you see these kids on their cell phones tweeting and twittering and walking along, emailing each other and stuff. They're not reading papers. They're not, not watching the news. They do not understand the nuclear age which they are inheriting. They are inheriting massive quantities of radioactive waste which will leak in the future, get into the food supply and over time induce epidemics of cancer, leukaemia and genetic disease, congenital malformations forevermore. You can imagine our descendants waking up in the morning. The food already radioactive, the breast milk radioactive, the babies being born deformed because they're exposed to radiation in utero which we heard from Dr. Wurtzelecki. Um, and getting cancer at the age of six because they're ex exposed very early, or in utero. That's the heritage we leave to our descendants. And we can talk to the cows come home about nuclear accidents, which is severe. But the most important issue is this radioactive waste, piling up all over the world and no one knows where to put it, and we don't know where to put it, and we never will. And I've been debating with the nuclear industry for 42 years and they say, don't worry, we're good scientists, we'll find the answer to radioactive waste. They haven't attended to it. I mean, they're like surgeons, you know. We don't clean up after us, we just let the nurses clean up. We're not interested in the waste we create. We're arrogant. Well, so are they. They're interested in building bombs and designing nuclear power. It's all very exciting. So. I, I say to them, well, that's like me saying to a patient, I'm sorry, but you have pancreatic cancer, that's what the CT scan shows, and your prognosis is probably six months, but don't worry, I'm a very good doctor. In 20 years' time, I'll find the cure. But there will never be a cure to the storage of radioactive waste. So we're in a very, very, very serious predicament, and as Tim Rousseau's work shows, that we're not the only ones with genes and who get congenital malformations. All plants and animals have genes, and what we're doing with this radioactive waste, or when it leaks out from reactors or whatever, the Earth is in the intensive care unit, gravely ill, and we are all physicians now to the dying planet. And unless we move and dedicate our total life to saving it, we leave our children nothing. And I think it's terribly important to get down to where we really live, where we, who do we really love, what would we do to save our child? Will we dedicate our lives like a lioness or a lion protecting the cubs? Forget about all the data and the figures and stuff. Listen to your intuition and you'll know what you've got to do. So I just want to give you a picture of how dire the situation is, how we stay up all night with a dying patient. And we don't even think about tiredness until we hit the wall at 2 a.m. and have to have a hamburger and a milkshake. But you don't think about yourself when you're treating patients. So we mustn't think about ourselves or our lives when we're trying to save the planet. The only life in the universe, probably. The responsibility is so huge, and I wouldn't talk like this unless I knew there were answers. Abolish the nuclear weapons, now. Close down all those reactors, now. And stop burning fossil fuel, now. And fill the country up with, with solar, and wind, and geothermal, and conservation, and it would make the Americans so proud. They need to be proud of something now. And that... That revolution has to come from you. Huh? Because I'm 75, I'll probably be dead soon. Okay. So, uh, look, I want to thank all the...